Yes, it's afternoon delight radio show here on WRVS 89.9. Your big bro on radio, Clay Mercer, here with you. More feel-good flavor on the way, plus some info on the NC Promise tuition plan is coming up in a few. But right now, it's time for conversations with the Chancellor. And live in studio, I have the Chancellor of Elizabeth City State University, Dr. Carrie Dixon, with us. Chancellor Dixon, welcome to your show. Happy New Year to you. And, and how was the holidays? Happy New Year, Clay and every. Body listening today, the holidays were wonderful. We are so excited. We welcomed our students back to campus last week. Mm -hmm. So, Clay, we are ready for 2022. Yeah, let the spring semester begin. And, uh, you know, before we go any further, the spring semester, I think, had a little bit of a delay, and I'm sure that had to do a lot with uh, COVID-19 and the cases that have spiked up. Could you speak a little bit very quickly about the decision that went into delaying the beginning of the spring semester? Yeah, so, you know, we wanted to make sure that our students were safe uh, coming back to the campus. And, you know, at the particular time when we had to make the decision, the Omicron numbers were going up. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make sure we gave just enough time for uh, people who were going to test positive right after the holidays to go ahead and do so and isolate at home. And so we delayed actually eight days, so about a week um, with the return, just to give a little more time there to see if we could um, uh, kind of minimize the spread of COVID. And so uh, that tend to work well for us. Uh, we did this last year, um, the same time last year, we delayed a week. And we were able to minimize COVID through the spring semester. And so we said we're going to do it again because the Omicron numbers were increasing and that was alarming. So we wanted to make sure that our students were able to come back in a safe environment and plus, you know, continue with the protocols in place to minimize the spread. And so we had our students move in um, last week and it was a very successful move in. And um, our students are continuing to take responsibility uh, in making sure that we are spreading a culture here of, of expectation, holding each other accountable for doing the right thing and minimizing the spread of COVID. So I'm just excited to have the students mm -hmm. back on campus and our faculty and staff returned as well. So the Vikings are back. Yeah, yeah, and it's time, man. And, and, and all the snow and everything that's taking place, I heard we have some snow coming in this weekend too. Do you like the wintry weather? Is that something that's fun for you to go out in the snow and make snow angels and, and all I, that? I think my, my kids and my dog like it more than more I do. More so than you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> More so than I do. I mean, I love to watch them yeah. enjoy the snow. Um, but, you know, it was beautiful. The campus was beautiful, all dressed out in seven inches of mm -hmm. white snow. And our students enjoyed it. I saw the snowmen that were uh, made yeah. by students across campus. And, and so, you know, I think it was a, a nice little you know, uh, <laughs> weather uh, surprise for all of yes. us, even though we knew it was coming, but, you know, just to kind of bring some excitement to mm -hmm. the campus as the students came back. So, you know, I enjoy watching others. Yeah, enjoy there the you snow. go. I'm with you there. <laughs> I think I'm right there with you. Conversations with the Chancellor here on WRVS 89.9. Chancellor, we have a special guest with us to start off the new year. I'll let you go ahead and introduce our special guest. So I am excited to have Mr. Alan Goodson, who serves as Vice Chancellor for operations at ECSU, as well as general counsel. So he has two big job responsibilities, duties, portfolio is huge, um, as he continues to help me as a cabinet member to do the things we want to do and accomplish here at ECSU. And Alan actually has been on uh, campus for a while, uh, and this is a new role that he has as COO, but uh, he understands, he gets it, he's dedicated, he's committed to doing the right thing for ECSU. And I have to give him credit for this vision, carrying out this vision that his chancellor has and, and how we're <laughs> going to, uh, you know, beautify this campus. And the team that he works with is just amazing. We've done great things in my tenure, and I'm excited to see what's to come and a lot of capital projects. I want him to talk about some of the things that are going on on campus mm -hmm. because even some of our alumni who came back for homecoming mentioned the campus doesn't look the same. Yeah. You know, yeah. they were very excited. I even got a letter today from alum alumni who mentioned alumnus who mentioned that uh, he had a great homecoming. It was one of the best and he was just so happy 
at what he saw in regards to the look of the campus, mm-hmm. the feel of the campus. And so that was really nice to yeah. get that letter from him uh, just today. And so I'm excited that uh, people are taking notice. Our community is taking notice. They say the campus looks great, mm-hmm. but I can't take all that credit. So <laughs> I have to let uh, Mr. Goodson talk about how he was able to carry out the vision that he hears his chancellor talking about all the yeah. time and working with his team. So I'm delighted to have him on the show today. Welcome, Vice Chancellor welcome, Goodson, Thank welcome you to me. Conversations with the Chancellor, man. First time of what should be many in the future. I think we're going to have you on more often just to talk so. about everything that's going on. And she heaps high praise on you, and it's totally understanding. For people who are listening for the first time and hearing your voice for the first time, they hear Vice Chancellor, they hear all the duties that you do. Tell us a little bit about your, your day-in and day-out duties here on the campus of PCSU. Well, I think the Chancellor... Uh, she hit the nail on the head. It's a it's a busy day mm-hmm. uh, for most days, but it's good busy. Like I think uh, you know, the chancellor really set a vision for campus the moment she arrived, mm-hmm. and um, what that required, I think, is that all the cabinet members really stepped up and and started doing their part. My part is certainly ensuring that the university is on legal mm-hmm. uh, good legal footing, but more importantly, making sure our operations are are running um, up to par mm-hmm. and. She set a very bold and big vision for the campus in terms of how it looks, how it feels, what it says to a parent or student when they drive on campus. Um, you know, it's not always about building new buildings. That's it's right. the small things, right? It's, it's can you keep your hedges trimmed? Mm-hmm. You know, can you cut your grass? Can you yes. edge? Can you blow? You know, I, she always tells this story that, you know, stu- at, at, when she first arrived on campus, this is before I had facilities. Mm-hmm. When she first arrived on campus, uh, students were applauding uh, uh, the the campus uh, facility staff for just putting mulch around trees. <laughs> yes. You know that that's a very low standard. Yeah. And yeah, you know yeah, yeah. When, when I say she when she gave uh, when she gave me facilities, uh, she set a very bold bold vision. And I think uh, what we've been able to do together with uh, an incredible group mm-hmm. of people: uh, Dennis Leary, uh, Mike Williams, Anyel, Mel. Every single body that works um, in every single trade, mm-hmm. they have been fully dedicated and bought into that vision. Mm-hmm. And I think you've seen quite a few changes just in terms of the landscape on campus in a very short period of time. And very that's really so. because of, of the hard work that they've been able to accomplish. You know, and it's hard work. You talk about the mulch and how, you know, it's got to start somewhere. It and does. even that small of a start has blossomed into what it is today. You talked about your staff, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up some of their names. I wanted to kind of delve into that a little bit because it's a team effort. Uh, the team seems to work tirelessly. It's almost like a 24-hour job. But you. speak a little bit more about what they do and how important they are to the campus. So, you know, I, I, was, I, I called them today and I told them, today we, we launched, I'll, I'll just share one thing that mm-hmm. we did today, the Chancellor didn't mention, but we had a groundbreaking for a UAS facility yes. um, that's going to support our academic program. Mm-hmm. Effectively what it is, it's going to be a drone facility where you can fly drones inside of a netted facility. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of people don't see what goes on in the background to to get something like that off the mm-hmm. ground. You know, that's a group of dedicated people. You know, again, Dennis Leary, Mike Williams, Mac on grounds, who oversees grounds. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Melanie Baker, Anyel, Abola. You know, these individuals are, you know, they they don't have a lot of staff, but they got a ton of heart yes. and uh, no quit in them. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm telling you, there's never a time where I call them and ask them to, to do something mm-hmm. um, that's certainly going to make us look good as a campus, and yeah. they, they decline. Yeah. Uh, they don't complain. Yeah. They roll up their sleeves and get to work. So, mm-hmm. you know, as a, as a manager, it's, it's a whole lot easier when you're working with employees that are truly, truly dedicated yeah. Yeah. Uh, like they are and like they have been since they first stepped foot yeah. on this campus. Yeah, I agree. Any type of event that WRVS puts on without facilities, it doesn't happen, yeah, and that includes right. border class that just took place. Yeah. So I really give kudos to you and the team for everything that you all have done. Uh, you talk about the legal side also of everything. I think all the departments, you deal with all of them when it comes to the legal side. Just talk a little bit more about what that entails here, specifically for ECSU and your duty there. Yeah, you know, it's very interesting. Even lawyers don't really know that campuses maintain their own legal departments. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you'd be surprised how many lawyers just don't know that that most universities have in-house legal counsel. Hmm. And, you know, um, you know, I, I will share just in the UNC system, we all have in-house legal counsel. Mm-hmm. Some legal counsel shops are very big. I mm-hmm. mean, more than 18 lawyers. Wow. Um, some, some are very small. So it, it really depends on the size of the campus. But what we really do is we provide advice and counsel on employment issues directly with HR. 
Um, you know, we review contracts, everything that we buy as a contract attached to it, every, all the services that we receive, mm-hmm. whether it's a facility service or we're bringing on some new software wow. or, you all know, you may need to buy, purchase some new mics or, mm-hmm. or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. Uh, there's a contract in many cases attached to it. And, you know, I work with uh, someone who is phenomenal at, you know, keeping track of all those things and reviewing those contracts. And that's um, Felicia Melton, who has mm-hmm. been here. For quite some time, she is. She is certainly. Um, again, when when I think about employees who have been fully dedicated to the mission of ECSU and really bought into the leadership, you know, she's a prime example of what that looks like day to day. Mm-hmm. And uh, couldn't do my job without her. Wouldn't, may not do my job <laughs> without. Her. Um, but I'm. I'm certainly. Um, you know, again, I'm, my heart is full with the dedication of, of the employees that that we've seen here. Uh, working for this institution tirelessly. Mm-hmm. Conversations with the Chancellor Clay Mercer with ECSU Chancellor Dr. Kerry Dixon and Vice Chancellor Alan Goodson. And uh, we talked earlier about the groundbreaking that took place uh-huh. earlier today, and that's exciting. When you go past the water yes. tower, you can't miss it. You can't. And it's just for drones. I mean, it's uh, and I think there's a lot of rules that goes into it. I think a drone can't go yep. but so high before you have to call the FAA or, yep. and all of that. Uh, but this facility is built specifically for that mission. That's exactly right. Uh, you know, one of the one of the things that we're always conscious of is our legal and compliance mm-hmm. uh, concerns. And the FAA says that you just can't fly drones as high and as, as far as you want to. Mm-hmm. You have to do it within a controlled space. So Dr. Rawat, uh, Dr. Ward, the provost, mm-hmm. uh, I know they met with the chancellor and said, look, we need this for our academic program. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, through the benefit of Mackenzie Scott, um, you know, that gift really went, helped us support that need. And we see real applications to it just mm-hmm. in terms of, um, you know, how we use our partners uh, with ECPD, police officers that may be coming there and, and, and changing. That's that's one of, of many capital projects that we have on the horizon. And it's wonderful that we have you here so you can give us a little bit more sure. info on what the future holds as far as what's to come. We have renovations that are happening on campus. Could you just give us kind of a, a broad spectrum of what we can look forward to here in 2022 and beyond? So, you know, I'll, I'll start by saying this. You know, my, my team gets excited when leadership buys into a vision. And mm-hmm. what cannot be, I think, uh, uh, overstated is, you know, the chancellor is, is given many priorities, but she is. She will go and advocate for what she needs, and yeah. and um, this what you're seeing in terms of what's happening on campus is because of the work that she does tirelessly. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure on the phone probably late at night and early in the oh, morning. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, just making sure that the university's priorities stay on the front burner, mm-hmm. and and she's done that, and I think you've seen that in the state budget. So what you've mm-hmm. seen now is you've seen that, um, you know, we, we have a number of capital projects that are going to go prepare, that's going to propel the institution um, forward in the future. Uh, we're building a new residence hall. As you know, our enrollment has grown um, under Chancellor Dixon, and that, that is a, a need for us. So uh, we're going to build a, a new residence hall at the tune of about $40 million. Mm. Uh, one thing that Chancellor challenged me to do is go on other campuses and look at, uh, look and see what they have, mm-hmm. right? So we, we, we can't lose sight. We do, we do, um, educate students, but we're all competing for the same student. Very true. So we can't lose sight of that mm-hmm. in terms of what we're trying to do here on campus from a, you know, just from a feel and look standpoint. Mm-hmm. So I took the team out to UNC Charlotte. We looked and we saw what their uh, facilities looked like. Um, Lisa McClinton, our uh, CFO, she took us to UNC School of the Arts. We saw what mm-hmm. their facilities looked like. We also went to North Carolina Central. So we, mm-hmm. we got a good understanding of what are the students that go to those schools? What are they experiencing? What are the amenities? What are they? What are their norms? So now we've we've taken all that data, um, and we put out an RFP yesterday, mm-hmm. and the RFP is for to get our design for our facility, which will have our own our own mm-hmm. tweaks to it, but it will be at that standard, right? Mm-hmm. The standard that mm-hmm. that other campuses have. Um, I think too long we have we have not li- always lived up to that, and the cha- the the chancellor has challenged us to do that this time. So. Uh, one of the key projects that we're pushing for is going to be a new residence hall, uh, somewhere between 300 and 400 bed residence mm-hmm. hall that's going to go to support um, student enrollment because, as you know, student enrollment continues to grow every single year. Very so that's so. that's an exciting project. We also have, um, you know, you, you can't always build buildings and not think about your underground infrastructure. Yes. Right? Like <laughs> infrastructure goes to support the building. Yeah, you got to bring right. some water and some power to it. Right? And, <laughs> and, you know, I think people always want what's shiny, but no no one, you know. That's so, right. again, and, and, you know, what we went to the chancellor and we said, look, if we're going to grow our facilities, we have to think about our infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So we were also 
able to get uh, millions of dollars that will go to um, repair, replace, build new some of our underground infrastructure that nice. goes to support those critical functions. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned, you got to bring water to a building. Yeah. you got to bring power to a building. Um, not just existing, but your new buildings. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have money in the budget to um, – to help us grow in that way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, an investment now is going to help the institution uh, grow for the next 50, 60 years. Yeah, that's true. Um, Chancellor, you brought that up before. No longer putting Band-Aids. We want right. actual right. fixes, and, and this is part yes. of that. permanent yeah. fixes. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, you know, that that's a key project um, that we have here on campus that we're also uh, put out an RFP for as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that we're also um, – going to be doing is uh, building a, a sky bridge across Weeksville Road. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that really came as a concern, um, I know, from students and probably was one of the first things that hit the chancellor's desk uh, was, you know, the, the concern about crossing Weeksville Road. Mm-hmm. You know, it, cars travel down that road very fast. Yeah. Late at night, there was poor visibility. Uh, we have seen an alum uh, die, I believe, mm-hmm. from – uh, trying to cross the road, and then just maybe two years ago, we saw uh, one of our own students get hit oh, late yeah. at night, yeah. right? So, you know, what are the ways that we could find to um, make sure students can cross that road to get to Viking Village mm-hmm. in a safe way where Sky Bridge is, is one, one option? And we've seen those at UNC Charlotte. We've seen those at Morgan State. Uh, we've seen those at, at lots of different institutions. Um, so the chancellor advocated for and received money to uh, build a Sky Bridge across Weeksville Road so students right. can go above it. And not have to worry about uh, dodging traffic. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, that's very important for us. And uh, that's also a project we'll, that we'll be working with the city and NCDOT um, to, to really implement here on campus. So that's a that's another major project that we have underway. And the students have talked about the Sky Bridge before. And I think it's really important. Uh, and, and, I, and I agree, you know, that the traffic can get kind of hectic going down that street. So I think the Sky Bridge is really good to have uh, just for the safety of everyone who wants to go across. And when we talk about that project specifically, what is the end date looking like for that to be placed here on the campus? Is there a certain period of time where that will be here? Yeah, that, that's going to be a – I think that's going to be a, a tricky one in terms of scheduling. Mm. And and let, let me share with you why. So when we build a campus, we build a building here on this campus. It's re, We're the owner, right? So we really only have to consult with ourselves. Okay. Um, the Sky Bridge, though, is crossing a state highway. Yeah. So we have to consult with DOT. Mm-hmm. Um, it's landing on private property. So we also have to consult with the private property owner. Got it. Okay. And then um, because it has to be so high, it's going to impact existing utilities. There are power lines that run. That's correct. So we're going to have to talk to the city about relocating or finding another way to reroute those power lines Mm -hmm. so that when our sky bridge lands off from our property onto that property, um, it doesn't impact that power. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a tricky one in terms of scheduling just because we have to bring a lot of partners uh, to the table. But what I can assure you is next week we're starting those conversations, Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to bring those partners into the fold to to begin to have those those conversations. So, you know, uh, we look to move as fast as possible, mm-hmm. but we we certainly recognize that this one is a I think is a very involved process just because yeah. of the partners we have to consult mm-hmm. along the way. Now, yeah. if it's a building on our campus, we can move as fast as as we need to mm-hmm. because we're the only we're the only people that provide input on yeah. that. Interesting enough, and, and you talk about the Sky Bridge and how important it is, but some people see things and they think it goes up in a day or a week. It, it takes a lot of planning for a lot of this. I'm glad you're saying that. <laughs> so, you know, that's something that I left out of my remark. So let me level set with everybody yes. because I know they, they see that, you know, we received all of this money and they're going to be looking for shovels in the dirt tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not how projects work. How projects work is they start off with the design. You, you can't you can't build a project until some architect and engineer has designed it. Mm -hmm. So every single one of our projects require that. And those plans, right, those building plans have to get approved by state construction office. It's a state office that controls all the construction for the state. Mm -hmm. Um, So they look at those plans. They make sure that you have your life safety systems, like your sprinklers and your fire alarms. They make sure you have the appropriate number of exits. They make sure that, you know, they make sure oh. that you got your mechanical systems correct, your HVAC systems correct, all your electrical is up to code, all your plumbing is up to code. Mm-hmm. So that is a process that you got to go through before you can even put shovel in the dirt. Gotcha. And that's a very involved, um, very time-consuming process mm-hmm. because you got to give an engineer, uh, an architect your vision. They have to draw it. 
Then once they draw it, they have to draw it in a way to where state construction can review it and accept it. Most of the time, state construction is going to ask questions about different pieces of the building and say, hey, tell me a little bit more about this electrical yeah. uh, outlet here or this, you know, this, this plumbing um, inlet here. Um, and then only after that, once they say, yes, this, this meets state's um, code in terms of building mm-hmm. code, then they give you the green light to start construction. So that <laughs> takes time. That takes yeah. that really takes real time. Yeah, it takes longer than a week or so. So <laughs> I know everyone is going to be expecting shovels in the dirt yes. this year. Yes. You, you, you likely will not see a lot mm-hmm. of that this year mm-hmm. um, just because it takes time to design. It takes time to approve. And then only after that uh, you get to construction. And then once you're in construction, um, something that we have seen here is that materials are delayed. So, that's right, that's right. you know, we had a roofing project that started over a year ago. Mm-hmm. We're still waiting on materials for some of our wow. roofs, and that's because of COVID, yeah. right? So the factories are not producing as much because there's manpower shortage, um, and they're not getting materials to you um, as fast. And mm-hmm. when they get materials to you, um, they are usually uh, with a price increase. So you, you, you balance all of that. You know, I joke with my team. There was a time when we didn't have money, but there was tons of materials. Now there's not that many materials, but we have money. So, you know, I don't, I don't know which way to go. But, um, you know, it's something that we are working towards. And, you know, we're very intentional to bring these buildings and these services here to campus yeah. as fast as possible. Conversations with the Chancellor Clay Mercer. You're truly here with ECSU Chancellor Dr. Kerry Dixon and Vice Chancellor Goodson. Giving us information on some of the upcoming projects. I have one specifically that I I want to ask you about, but we talk about the cafeteria, and I hear there's some some new things happening uh, that, that that will be taking place with the cafeteria. Could you tell us a little bit more about that situation? Yep. So let me let me start by saying, you know, what drives really all of our buildings and, and where to place them and, and what to do with utilities is our campus master plan, mm-hmm. uh, which is which is currently underway as well. So we have a lot of projects running concurrently. The campus master plan really maps out what does the campus look like 15 years from now. Okay. Where mm-hmm. are these new buildings going to go on the campus? Mm-hmm. Right. Do you put a new dining facility over by Mitchell Lewis or do you drop it over by the intramural field? Right. Uh, do you put it over by the water tower? All of these things are determined by uh, the planning process of what your campus looks like. Mm-hmm. Now, dining is, is one of those large buildings that we got to decide where to put it. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the with the uh, new residence hall. Um, so the, the dining facility uh, is about a 15 million dollar uh, new facility that we will be building. Um, again, that's a facility that, like all facilities, have to go to, through design and um, also have to go through the construction process. But it's a facility that we're going to bring here to campus. And, you know, one of the things that we did when we went to other campuses is we just did not look at res halls. We also looked at dining facilities, mm-hmm. and we ate in dining facilities. I personally ate in the UNC Charlotte's dining facility. Um, got a feel for the layout, understood what services their their students um, are receiving in that dining mm-hmm. facility, and um, that is that is the knowledge that we're bringing here when we when we put this fifteen million dollar dining facility here on this campus for our students. It's important, um, you know. There are two things students are definitely going to do on this campus: they're going to sleep and they're going to eat. <laughs> so you got to make sure that both of those they're comfortable in both of those very environments. True, very true. Uh, so that's not lost on us. That's not lost on the chancellor, and and but that's why she advocated for those things. Outstanding, man! Just great projects coming, Chancellor. You know, twenty twenty two is here, but. The future looks bright for this university. Yes, it is very bright. Very, very bright. And notice how um, Vice Chancellor Goodson said, I gave him facilities. Yeah, yeah. It seems like you just. Let's let's, let's hone in on that. I'm not. I'm not going to say he welcomed more on his plate right. because you know, granted, he was already general counsel. Correct. But he's a team player. Yeah, and, got it, and got he it. didn't. He did not tell me no. Uh, he took it on, and uh, maybe unwillingly, but he took it on, and he's been doing he's an excellent, an excellent job. job. Correct. Excellent job. He and his team are amazing, and I'm glad he was able to give them individual shout outs um, Uh, by name because they work hard and I am just so excited to have such a wonderful team of people who care so much about this university Mm -hmm. and uh, what it looks like, how it's perceived, and they work hard to make sure that it looks good. So I'm excited about that. But I just had to say, he said how I gave it to him. You, you <laughs> held on to that one, too. I, I heard it, but I tried to let it slide, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> Vice Chancellor Goodson, we, we can sit here and talk all day. I have so many other questions for you. We'll, we'll wait till we get off the microphone. But thank you so much for being a part 
of uh, conversations with the chancellor. Um, for people who may want to reach out to you, they may be listening, might want to get some more information about you or your services. Uh, could you give them some contact information? Sure. So, you know, my, my email is always available. And, and, you know, the chancellor, you know, one thing that we have as a cabinet is open door policy. So mm -hmm. we're, we're open uh, to receiving suggestions, ideas, uh, just conversations with anyone. So if anyone has any, um, any any of those, please feel free to reach out to me. 252-335-3596 is my uh, number. And my email is a good son. So A-G-O-O-D-S-O-N at E-C-S-U dot E-D-U. And listeners, if you missed out on any of that information, just give us a call. I'll be able to give it to you here. Thank you so much, Vice Chancellor Goodson, Thank for you. being a part of today's it. show. Chancellor, so much to get into. 2020 is here, and I thank you so much for making today's show happen. This is usually the time where I turn my microphone off and let you give a few final remarks to our listeners. So, listeners, again, Happy New Year. We are excited about 2022. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for advocating and supporting Elizabeth City State University. I am just delighted to be a part of such a wonderful community of people who love this university, want to see it thrive, and want to help build a foundation of sustainability for years and years and years to come. And as VC Goodson mentioned, you know, we want these buildings here 50, 60, 70 years from now. And so we are moving away from the uh, notion of a Band-Aid fix to permanent fixes and structures and uh, just, you know, just buildings and, and making the campus look beautiful so that students will love where they live and learn. And so we're committed to doing that. We're also committed to minimizing the spread of COVID. We are requiring that our students, faculty, staff, uh, visitors wear masks and indoors. And, uh, you know, we're just doing everything that we can because ECSU, our community has done such a good job. Uh, with minimizing the spread of COVID, where we have come in with the lowest case numbers in the UNC system. And that says a lot about how committed our campus community is to following these protocols and doing the right thing. And to our faculty and staff, they are resilient and they have been, uh, you know, just right there ready to do all that we can to make sure that we keep COVID as a top priority, but our safety, our success as an institution, all of that matters. And so I'm just glad V.C. Goodson comes to work every day. Uh, he hasn't given up on me, but I've been piling, up, <laughs> piling it up on him. Uh, but he and his team have been amazing. And I do hope that he's able to come back and talk about the progress that we're making on these uh, projects and our capital uh, projects that we're going to be able to fund through the state budget. I'm so grateful for our legislators, our governor, our system president, everyone who uh, made sure that we were going to get this funding that we were able to receive over $140 million. And we have never seen funding like this at ECSU, and we will be celebrating 131 years, and we've never seen funding this type of investment from the state. And so what we're committed to doing is we want to show them that this is where the investment should be, and we're going to do the right thing. We're going to be good stewards of this uh, funding that we're receiving, and we're just going to make sure ECSU is a dynamic institution that we all know it is yeah. and that is here for generations to come. Yeah. So, Clay, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. So, listeners, keep <laughs> tuning in yes, because we're going to so. have some exciting <laughs> things to share. And this drone facility, it is going to be amazing. Yeah. And you're going to be able to see it from Weeksville Road. Yeah. And, and it's going to be amazing for our students, our law enforcement partners, our community partners, those who want to be trained. I mean, it's going to be awesome. And mm -hmm. it's the only one of its kind yeah. that's going to be in North Carolina. And then there's another one with a partnership with Wake Tech Community mm -hmm. College that's going to be built on their campus, their new campus, um, Site 4.0 in Wendell. But it's going to be branded ECSU. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. And that's also going to help us with our community college uh, transfer mm -hmm. pipeline as well. Mm -hmm. So when they finish the degree at Wake Tech, they will continue on. We want them to continue that's on right, right. to get their bachelor's degree at ECSU. So building that pipeline with our community college partners are very important. And working closely with COA 
Way, um, great partnership here in Elizabeth City, MACU, great partnership with their presidents, love them, talk to them uh, maybe three, four times a week. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we're all in it for what's best for our students and what's best for our institutions and Elizabeth City, this region, and uh, the whole state of North Carolina and beyond. So, I'm just thrilled. Yes, I think everybody is. The students, faculty, staff, the alumni, everybody's excited about where ECSU was going. The vision looks great, and uh, VC Goodson is part of that. So, again, thank you so much for being a part of today's show. Chancellor, thank Absolutely. you so much for making this happen. Listeners, if you missed any of today's show or you want to catch up on past shows, you can always go to the WRVS 89.9 YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page and catch up at any time. Chancellor, we're going to talk in the next episode I want to talk a little bit more about that pipeline because I think that's so important, our connection with some of the community colleges around the state and in yes. other areas. We're going to talk more about that. And, we, you know, we're just going to talk so much about what's to come for ECSU, especially as we continue here yes. through the spring uh, And semester. I would just add also our adult learners. Adults, yes, yes, very it's important. never too late that's very to come true. back <laughs> to earn your degree. NC and, Promise. And Please when remember. I tell you, yes, NC Promise, now is the time. $500 tuition. Those of yes. you out there listening who've always yes. wanted that credential and never was able to get it because you had to go into the military, go to, into the factory or go mm -hmm. to work right after high school, now is the time. Yeah. If your heart desires it, you can achieve it. I agree. I like at that. At any age. I like that. So, we're going to, let's talk about that yeah, some more, we're too, we're going to get into that. That's going to be good. Listen, uh, listeners, we have so much more on the way. We have more of your feel-good flavor. We'll talk about NC Promise. We'll also give you info on the change of date to ECSU's winter open house. I'll give you those details in a few, Chancellor. You got to give you a Prince. You got to give me a Prince song. You got Vice, Chan Vice Chancellor Goodson here. He likes Prince. I'm sure y'all <laughs> can come together and give me a Prince song to take us out here today. I'm a little too young for Prince. Here we go. No, <laughs> <laughs> Look, he had to throw that in, didn't he, Clay? He did. He, he, he had did. to throw that in. I'm going to know how young I am. That's yeah, all. yeah. I'm, look, I'm going to let that. I'm going to let that one go. Good, good. I'm going to let that so. one go because I, you so. know, he he tried to he tried to get me yeah, there with that yeah, one. I, I can't let him uh, do that to me. This, you know, we, this Prince <laughs> is one of the big players on this show, so we got to have some Prince. What song yes, should we go with? Yes. Today? What do you think? Let's go with "Let's Go Crazy." Let's go crazy. That'll yeah, work. let's that bring some excitement to the show. We can definitely do that. We can do that. Listeners, stay with us. More feel good flavor on the way. This is Afternoon Delight Radio Show.